Hey guys, Stealth here. Welcome back to an interesting tournament match. It's going to be the big French quadruple 16-inch guns. Because they're relatively small Italian guns at 13.5 inches. But as we've seen, having big guns, it can be the advantage. You can pen harder. Um, having the smaller guns, rate of fire, high explosive, you burn things down. Either party can win. Um, and both parties need to win. Because they have both only lost... Some more than others, but uh, I bet it'd be a great boost for morale if one of them would finally get a win to the register. Let's have a look. This tournament is kindly sponsored by the Block Zone. They have all sorts of different projects to keep you busy. And I am happy that they were willing to sponsor this tournament. Now the winner is going to get the Bismarck, which is an enormous... Uh, it's not even that big. It's way bigger. It's 1.25 meters of a model. It's 7,000 pieces and change. You're going to have your hands full if you win the tournament and get this thing shipped to you. But they have tons of other stuff. They have the Nighthawk, for example. I love the, the sleek look of this thing. And the, well, part of the 17 in my name is based on the Nighthawk. They have um, a range of supercars if you're into that stuff. Um, again, these are not small projects. This Neon Evo is, uh, well, not only <laughs> not cheap, but also three and a half thousand pieces. Now, speaking of the not cheap, if you add code STEALTH upon checkout, you can get 10% discount. So that saves about 20 bucks on this particular design. We'll head down to the link down below in the description, click on that, and you're going to get the 10% discount included. If not, hit the website theblockzone.com and add code STEALTH. Thank you to the Blockzone for sponsoring the project. Sorry, for sponsoring the tournament. Um, and again, if you win, you gain the Bismarck. Now, on to the video. Here we are. Interesting formation for the French. The Dunkirk, Le Poinçon Magnifique and Couronne are in a line abreast formation. Um, but they're fairly poorly positioned at that formation because they're... Well, their main firepower is on their bows. And that's not what they're bringing to bear today. So this whole group's gonna have to turn around. Now, sometimes the game just does this and places ships in a line abreast formation. I don't know why. Generally, it's line ahead. But I do find it very interesting to uh, see the ships use this. Uh, the Italian ships, the Impero class, is designed by Salty Atlas. They're a bit hard to see because it's a night battle. This means we have minus 45% accuracy. And this is one of the conditions that I set for the tournament. Random conditions. You don't know what time of day you're fighting. You don't know if you're fighting in clear weather or a storm. It can do... well, it can be anything. And today, it's a storm, which can some... Well, some ships might not be able to do that well in it. With the Generation 3 radar, you basically don't care. But, as you can see, the ships are struggling to find each other. And this could mean that ships are going to close in more. They're going to have to fight each other at shorter ranges. Which, especially with ships like the French that carry torpedoes can have serious impacts on how the battle is going to play out. It could mean that the torpedoes on both sides are going to play a far more crucial role. Which I rather hope, because so far we've seen some torpedoes hit here and there, but it hasn't really been substantial. Now first blood goes to the Italians. They were able to damage the French ships. The French do hit the Italians every now and then. But so far, have been unable to inflict damage. Now, why is that? Is the French shell not good enough? Um, no, actually, it's a <laughs> it's a really good shell at that range. 5.4 inch armor penetration with HE against the deck. 33 inches of armor pen with AP. And I heard a torpedo launch. Dunkirk is the first that I know of to send her fish. 24 inch fish at that. They are not that easy to spot, minus 36%. Uh, they are apparently not going to stick together. <laughs> One of them has already changed direction. So that's going to mean some of these torpedoes are going to veer very far off course. Oh, another launch. The Poisson has launched her torpedoes as well. Already at 15 clicks. And Le Poisson Magnifique has taken some serious damage. That was only one hit. But she is flooding. Maximum bulkheads should mean it's not going to be that much of an issue. 
And with Anti-Flood 3, that water ought to get pumped out relatively quickly. Now, why are the French struggling so hard with dealing damage? And why are the Italians finding it rather easy? Because the Italians supposedly can't pen anywhere. But one of those 13 inches went clean through the fore deck of Le Poisson, so I guess that's not entirely accurate. That whole representation of whether you can pen or not. Oh, there goes another torpedo. That didn't want to fight anymore. Here's another torp that didn't want to fight anymore. Another good hit on the Poisson. She's already taken 8.5k damage at this point. And it's only going to get worse. They're really taking a bounding here. That's going to impact their stability. They're going to start losing crew relatively quickly. They're already down almost 10... Yeah, they're up 10%. 11%. These 13 inches might not be... And they're 13... Yeah, 13 fives. They're not nearly as big as the 16s. But so far, the 16s have been largely... Well... Useless. This was finally a good hit. 1200 damage. So that's going to leave a mark on the Italian ship here. Um... Yeah, that turret took a hit, but it's not dead. It's still functional. Oh, the Poisson's taking more hits here. In this battle in the nighttime. You can really barely make out the Italian shapes on the horizon. It's going to be a battle of the rangefinders and the radars, this one. And I really like it. This is why I set the random conditions for this tournament. Because you never quite know what you're going to fight. You never quite know how the battle is going to play out and what that's going to mean for the ship that you're designing. Some snipers might find it really hard to play in the dark, for example, because they don't have the right equipment for it. Uh, Le Poisson is down to 20% crew loss. And the Italians are working very hard to set a whole lot of fires on her. Her 6 inchers are also flinging HE right back at the Italians. But the French HE hasn't really done that much. The Italians do not have secondaries. No, they do. But there are a couple of 3.5s and, and a couple of 1.6s. So, just generally really useless. Unless you're almost on top of them. Now, we have closed the distance, to be sure. We're about 10 clicks out. But that's still not exactly the range that you need. Oh, there goes your secondary tower. Loss of a secondary tower, I believe, doesn't do a whole lot for the ship. Just means a bunch of crew has been killed. But beyond that, it's not that bad. Dunkirk is now coming under fire from the Italians. Lots of fires are being set. She's already lost 10% of her crew. Le Poisson is given some reprieve, able to put out the fires. And her crew loss halts at about 22%. Incoming torpedo. We saw that relatively late. Even with Sonar 3, the ships are not getting a whole lot of warning. Fortunately, it seems like the Italians have scattered a bit. Look at that. Another extensive fire claims a warship. As Dunkirk sinks. And the Italians were able to hit Le Poisson with a torp. Yikes, that's another 700 damage that the French really didn't need. They're... Really not doing much against the Italians. How? Their accuracy is 27%. The Italians, 25, so it's not that bad. Reload time, 65 seconds. Reload's probably going to be about 30. 22 seconds. Yikes. Torpedo away from Le Poisson. Another set away from Couron, which is also ducking torpedoes. There's another stray torpedo over there. We've got more outbound torps there. The Italians have sonar 1, so they'll have even less warning than the French. That's going to be interesting. They do have anti-torp 3, so they should be able to at least sustain an impact and not immediately explode. As for Le Poisson Magnifique, well... I think this is going to be an extensive fire. Because her damage control is going down very, very quickly now. 
Her ability to control the fire is just disastrously poor. And the Italians just lay into her every 20 seconds. Unless they switch fire. Where are all those torpedoes at? Here we go. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't see the Impero getting hit by that one. Perhaps this torp? These are most likely... This one's going to miss. This one could hit. Are the Italians going to be aware? And what caliber is this? It's a 24-incher. You really do not want to get hit by that. Lepanto is turning desperately, but it's too late. The only thing she might be able to do is swing her stern around. But I rather doubt it. That's going to be awful close. Yep, hit. 1,200 damage. Flooding on their stern. Other torpedoes? No joy. She did not get hit by a torpedo, the Impero. There's another torpedo heading towards Lepanto. Oh, Le Poisson is basically dead. Not a whole lot more that needs to go wrong for this ship. She's lost 34% of her crew. Her damage control is down to 71%. She is in dire, dire straits. And she's not even coming under fire anymore. Because once again, the Italians have decided to switch fire. They're now targeting the Couron. Couron is going to have a really bad time. She's already suffering from her own damage instability. So her DPS is badly reduced. And the Italians don't seem to be affected by the same issue. 40% accuracy. Because keep in mind, it's not only that your own accuracy falters. As you lose speed because you're flooding, you're also making yourself an even easier target. So not only will your DPS fall, effectively their DPS will increase. Their ability to hit you gains and that's really not something you need when you're already down in the gutter. The Poisson is still trying to hammer the Italian ships. And she... Ooh, that was a good hit. That was 2200 damage on one shot. Her buoyancy is starting to falter now. Can the Impero survive this? I think she can. Can the Couron survive this? I rather doubt it. Because that's a lot more edgy that's coming in. That's three volleys. It's one fire set. Got away lucky there. And two more fire set on Kuron. She has also lost 20% of her crew. But the regular crew at uh, standard quarters, your damage control is not going to be that good anymore. Incoming torpedo from the Italians. Oh, did you get hit? Barely managed to dodge that, but more luck than anything else. Impero seems to have the flooding mostly under control. I'm not seeing her buoyancy drop very quickly. Huron, she's really suffering. The amount of fire that the Kuan is dealing with. There's another two, four, six. Two more. The Italians are either going to burn her down or kill her crew. With three more fires. Another two. She's like, what, two fires away from disaster? Even though... I mean, she already... Looks like a disaster at this point. Just sheer destruction. What does that look like from the Italian perspective? Do you really see a fireball on the horizon? Yeah, you do. There. That's Couron. That. Or, well. That's Couron. Not the, <laughs> the other ship doing a whole lot better, but that's the Dunkirk. She's already sunk a while ago. But yeah, you can kind of make out something burning on the horizon there. And as for your own ships? 
Yeah, sure, one of them is taking a bunch of fire. One of them is burning, but the other two, perfectly healthy. Can they at least take down one ship? I doubt it. More torpedoes are underway towards the French. French ships are really slow now. What are you doing, Poisson? Supposedly, you can still do 14 knots and you could do 22? That seems very optimistic. Incoming torpedo. One, two... I wouldn't be surprised if they both hit. That one hits the Poisson. This one is going to hit the Couronne. Unless the Couronne does something now, she's going to get torpedoed. Poisson has nothing to do. Can't turn. So yeah, that's another 1800 damage. Structural integrity down to 2%. Crew lost 36 and a half now. 0.7% structural. And there's the torpedo in the Couronne. Boom, 840 damage. So yeah, it's definitely a battle of the torpedoes, this one. The Italians were able to inflict 5,500 points of damage. They did really well with that. Ooh, that was juicy. Almost 5,000 points of damage on the Impero. Finally, the 16-inch hits as hard as it can. And it is going to claim the Impero! I guess Couron's empty, or is, is angry now. Oh, crap. She's going to have another torpedo coming for her. And hit. 1,700 damage. More flooding. Wait. They're firing armor piercing again. Oh, that could give them some reprieve. If only a little. Unless... Unless they're able to open up a whole bunch more flooding now. And so far they're not. They're just wearing down the structural integrity of the ship. Uh, successfully, I might add. One more hit and she's gone. Yep. <clears throat> that is three kills for the Italians and only one for the French. 5,217 sailors of the French died that day. So this should be a morale booster for the Italians, because they have finally taken down an opponent. The French, in this case. So we're going to give the points to the Italians. Uh, 11 points is a bit much. One point will do. Submit the scores, which means that we are looking at a loss, a loss, and a win for the Italians. So they're making progress. French... Not doing too hot, uh, losing twice, and having nothing to show for it. So, what's the French going to encounter next? The Super Alaska from the United States. Um, that's not going to be an easy fight. Because the United States might have a similar tactic to the Italians. As for the Italians, they only have one match left, which is match number 10. It's going to be a while. In which they will fight the Italians. So, they too will at some point meet the Super Alaska, but it's going to get, uh, it's going to get spicy. It's the 13 and a halfs versus the 13 and a halfs. In a while, that is. As for the next match for the B-Pool, I'm not sure why sometimes this thing just doesn't load, uh, it's going to be Austria-Hungary versus Russia. These two interesting ships, both. Um, Austria-Hungary, a bit more balanced. Russia, um, an odd duck, much like Japan. In the sense that it is um, an, an asymmetrical warship, I suppose you could call it. It has forward-facing guns only. But they are pretty spicy. They can actually deal some damage. So let's see how they deal against Austria-Hungary. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon for more.